After the war, we had air forces such as the Soviet Air Force and the Royal Air Force and the United States Air Force, the United States Army Air Forces that had come through the war with thousands of airplanes. But after the war, those air forces were obsolescent. Immediately, the jet had rendered them so. The jet promised a whole new era of air combat, of uh, engagements at high speed, at the ability to undertake slashing attacks and what we term blow-through attacks that were simply uh, unavailable to the era of propeller-driven airplanes, the ability to make repetitive attacks, and all these uh, very much took time to get used to. Basically, during uh, the uh, post-war periods following any war, we have always seen uh, cries that the era of dogfighting is over, the era of dogfighting is past. And people said the same thing when the jet came along. Well, now we're flying too fast, we obviously won't have dogfighting in the traditional sense. Just like they had said about the monoplane in the 1930s. Back in 1947, when I started flying F-80s, uh, we, uh, we were initially given the idea that this airplane was too fast, and that now that you were out of P-47s and that you were into jets, uh, you wouldn't have to, you're not going to worry about that anymore because dogfighting is at an end. They're, the speeds are too great and all that sort of thing. Turns are too wide and with, the, with the great speeds and that. Well, uh, we didn't know all that, so we just kept right on dogfighting with the airplanes, and it was a fine dogfighter. Of course, that training was soon to be put to the test as the war clouds gathered again, this time in Korea. And perhaps inevitably, a new classic fighter rose to the occasion. A direct descendant of the triplane and the Spitfire. The F-86 Sabre was the first swept-wing jet fighter in the West. And its speed and maneuverability won many converts and many battles. But back in Washington, the quest for the first supersonic fighter was echoing through the labyrinths of the Pentagon. Before long, maneuverability was again discarded in favor of the holy grail of power and speed. And again, the art of dogfighting was out of fashion. In 1953, the McDonnell Aircraft Company initiated a program which offered a twin-engine supersonic multi-role aircraft. And when in 1956 the F-4 Phantom was finally accepted, the strategists and tacticians were so convinced that conventional air-to-air -air combat was now a thing of the past that they even left a gun out of the design, believing that missiles would satisfy the requirements of any future air war. But not everyone was convinced that even in a high-tech aircraft such as this, that was a wise idea. I was told in the Pentagon in the, uh, by my boss, who was a two-star general, in the... Uh, when was it? 1963. He said, Old, go back to your desk and stop coming up with all of these studies proving that we don't have a conventional capability of the United States Air Force. You've got to get it through your head that we're not going to fight conventional wars anymore. He said, You're living in the past with your leather. You think you've got your leather flight jacket on and your white scarf and your goggles and leather helmet. And you're going to go out and do mortal air to air combat with the enemy. That's finished. We'll never do that again. So about uh, four years later, I was going up the Gulf of Tonkin in this airplane. Got a nice kid in the back seat named Steve Croker. <laughs> I said, Stevie, baby, look at all this that's going on around us right now. All those tankers and the thuds over there. And you were going to go up and drop iron bombs on a railroad and probably hassle with MiGs, but I, I want you not to worry about it because I have it on good authority that this is not happening. Of course, it was happening fast and furiously. Roger, I'm going to break off right. I see him loud and clear. But now, in addition to the historical inevitability of close quarter dogfighting, fighter pilots were coping with a deluge of radar and radio inputs, as well as being faced with surface to air missiles. Sand Consequently, you still need to train to the basics, the basics of dogfighting that probably haven't changed since the days of World War I. A barrel roll is still a barrel roll, and a Immelman is still an Immelman. We still do flat and rolling scissors, and we still need a gun on the aircraft to be able to shoot that guy when he's 500 feet out in front of us, which is well within the minimum ranges of all of our sophisticated missiles. But it's certainly not within the minimum range of a bullet. Which brings us right back to where it all started. Here at Top Gun the cream of the Navy's fighter pilots learn how to employ World War I tactics with 21st century technology.